So let's talk about angles. What exactly is an angle? An angle is formed by two rays that have a common endpoint. Now you need to know what a ray is. Here's a basic geometry view. This is a segment. A segment connects two points. It has two endpoints, in this case A and B. A ray has one endpoint, and the other side goes on forever. So that's a ray. A line has no endpoints. A line extends forever in both directions. So when we're talking about angles, an angle is formed between two rays, and it has a common endpoint, which is right here. This endpoint is also known as the vertex of the angle. The first ray is known as the initial side. The second ray is known as the terminal side. And the angle, which we can call theta, is measured from the initial ray to the terminal ray. Now let's say if we have a graph with the x-axis and the y-axis. An angle is said to be in its standard position if the vertex is at the origin, so that's the common endpoint, and the initial side or the initial ray is on the x-axis. Now if the terminal side or the terminal ray is above the x-axis, in this case if we rotate the angle or if we rotate from the initial side to the terminal side in the counterclockwise direction, and then the angle is going to be positive. If we need to rotate towards the clockwise direction in order to go from the initial side to the terminal side, then the angle is negative. So for example, let's say if we want to draw an angle of 30 degrees. This would be an angle of positive 30 degrees. If we want to draw an angle of negative 45, we would have to travel in the clockwise direction. So this would be an angle of negative 45 degrees. Now what is the difference between an acute angle, a right angle, a straight angle, and obtuse angle? You need to know the differences between the four. So in geometry, you've learned that a right angle is a 90 degree angle. Sometimes you'll see this box. So that's a right angle. The next angle that you need to be familiar with is an acute angle. An acute angle is simply an angle that's less than 90 degrees, but that's greater than zero. So 60 is an acute angle. Now what about a straight angle? A straight angle is basically equivalent to a straight line. It has an angle of 180 degrees. Finally, we need to go over an obtuse angle. So let's say this is the terminal side, and here's the initial side. An obtuse angle is greater than 90. So in this case, let's say the angle is 135. That means this one is an obtuse angle. And this is called, as you mentioned before, a straight angle. So make sure you're familiar uh, with these terms. Now you need to be familiar with the four quadrants. This is the first quadrant, here you have the second, this is the third quadrant, and this is the fourth quadrant. X is positive in quadrants 1 and 4. Y is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. X is negative in quadrants 2 and 3 and y is negative in quadrants 3 and 4. So make sure you know that, particularly as we get into sine and cosine, because sine is associated with the y values, cosine 
is associated with the x values. Sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. Cosine is positive in quadrants 1 and 4. Now you need to be familiar with the angles. On the x-axis, the angle is 0 degrees. On the y-axis, the positive y-axis is 90. And on the negative x-axis, it's uh, 180. And on the negative y-axis, it's 270 if you're traveling in the counterclockwise direction. Now 0 and 360 are the same. They're co-terminal angles, which means that they land on the same position. They're different angles that point to the same point on the graph. Now for those of you who want access to my complete online trigonometry course, here's where you can find it. Uh, go to udemy.com and then in the search box you could just search for trigonometry. And you can see my course is basically the one with the black uh, background. And then here is it. I'm still adding more lectures, but here's what I have so far. Um, introduction into angles, drawn angles, converting degrees into radians, uh, linear speed, angular speed problems, arc length, uh, information on the unit circle, how to evaluate trigonometric functions using the unit circle, uh, right triangle trigonometry, things like Sokotoa, even you can have video quizzes as well, solving word problems like angle of elevation problems. And then you have the next section, graphing sine cosine functions, secant, tangent, inverse trig functions, pretty much all the common stuff that you'll see in a typical uh, trigonometry course, even solving uh, bearings, verifying trigonometric identities, uh, some in difference formulas, double angle, half angle, and some other things too. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to add some other things as well. So feel free to check it out when you get a chance, and uh, let's continue back to the video. Now let's talk about how to draw angles in standard position. So how can we draw an angle of 45 degrees in standard position? So the first thing you want to do is draw your x and y axis. Now you know this is 0 degrees, the y axis is 90. So 45 have to be right in the middle between 0 and 90. So this is the initial side, which I'll write I for it and the terminal side. And so this measure is 45 degrees. Now for future examples, I won't always draw the initial side. But whenever you want to write the angle in standard position, it's always assumed that the initial side is on the x-axis. So you might just see me draw the terminal side. But keep in mind that the initial side is there, even if I don't show it. Now let's try some other examples. I draw an angle of 30 degrees and 60. So feel free to pause the video and try it. Now we know that 45 is right in the middle between 0 and 90. So 30 should be closer to 0 than it is to 90. So that should be an angle of 30 degrees. 60 is closer to 90 than it is to 0. So it should be somewhere in this region. So that's an angle of 60 degrees relative to the positive x-axis, where the initial side is. Now let's try some more examples. Draw an angle of 135 and also 210. And also try these. Draw an angle of 300 and an angle of, let's say, 330. So feel free to pause the video and try these four examples. It doesn't have to be perfect, but as long as you have the angle in the right position and in the right quadrant, that's good enough. Now keep in mind, between 0 and 90, the angle will be in quadrant 1. In quadrant 2, it's between 90 and 180. In quadrant 3, that's between 180 and 270. And quadrant 4 is between 270 and 360, which is the same as 0. So 135 has to be between 90 and 180, so this in quadrant 2. 
So this is an angle of 135 relative to the positive x-axis. Now let's try 210. 210 is between 180 and 270, but it's closer to 180. So therefore, 210 should be somewhere in that region. So this is an angle of 210 degrees from the positive x-axis. Now what about 300? 300 is between 270 and 360, but it's closer to 270, the negative y-axis. So it should be in that vicinity. So this is the angle of 300 degrees. And then 330 is closer to 360. So this is going to be 330. Now let's work on some negative angles in degrees. Go ahead and plot these numbers. Negative 60 degrees, let's say negative 135 degrees, negative 180, and also negative 240. So go ahead and try those problems. So let's count the angles, this time rotating in a clockwise direction. So remember, this is clockwise rotation. Actually, when you think of clockwise rotation, think of the way a clock rotates. A clock travels in this direction. Counterclockwise is opposite to the direction of a clock, so this is counterclockwise. So just make sure you remember this. In a counterclockwise direction, the angle is positive. In a clockwise direction, the angle is negative. So we know this is 0 and this is positive 90. So therefore, this must be negative 90 if we travel in the clockwise direction. And this is negative 180, negative 270, and 0 is equivalent to negative 360. So we want to stop at negative 60. So we need to rotate close to negative 90, but not too far. So that's an angle of negative 60. Now what about negative 135? That's between negative 180 and negative 90. So negative 135, it's in quadrant 3, but it's right in between negative 90 and negative 180. So that's negative 135. Now what about the next one? Negative 180. We can see negative 180 is right there. So it's simply over here, relative, of course, to the positive x-axis. So we're going to start the angle from here. So this is negative 180. Positive 180 would end up in the same location, but you would draw the angle, rotate in counterclockwise. Now what about negative 240? Negative 240 is in quadrant 2. It's between negative 180 and negative 270, but it's closer to negative 270. So it should be, maybe that's too close, somewhere in that vicinity. So this is going to be negative 270, I mean negative 240. And so now you know how to plot positive and negative angles in degrees on an XY rectangular coordinate system.